people would d debate as to whether or not it's really necessary for society to know that because, I mean, if you look at it at a more basic level, what, what exactly are the maritime admiralty commercial law courts doing? Well, what they're doing is they are alleging that you committed some sort of an infraction in a, while operating in a commercial capacity over which there exists some governmental regulatory authority. Now, um, the uh, statutes and the codes, they are all written in a very confusing, tangled up manner uh, to make it appear, they look like they say A, but they actually say F because the legal definitions of words are always different than the standard English dictionary definitions of words. Um, so one would say that the best way to uh, fight a case if, if you're being charged, anytime you're, you don't do any harm and you're being summoned to court, they are going to charge you with some sort of a statute or a code violation, which there is some commercial nexus. There are always going to be some sort of commercial nexus to that, and one would assert that the best way to um, win your case without question, the best argument possible is to object to the commercial nexus and because uh, you're disavowing being in commerce, therefore there's no um, grounds for the courts to charge you with some sort of a crime. Now, that being said, um, many would assert, well, yeah, but you still should know how the birth certificate straw man thing works because, it, well, if it goes really far down the rabbit hole, as people like you claim it does, then it would be in our best interest to know how the whole system works in order to defeat the powers that be. So why don't you enlighten us on... Um, the whole birth certificate straw man thing, and do you agree or disagree that the method I gave um, about objecting to the commercial nexus would be the best way to win cases in courts today? Well, for myself, I mean, you're asking for my uh, <clears throat> my opinion. As far as I'm concerned, I don't dis I don't fight anything anymore. I, I'm too old and too tired. I've been there and done that, so I don't fight anything anymore. If I got a ticket, which I probably won't because I don't drive anymore, but if I got a ticket or some kind of infraction, I just pay it because I consider that there are more important things now in the world than worrying about uh, paying a ticket and and, uh, and going through all of this menagerie of how the government really works. And, how courts really work. So I've kind of given up on worrying about it because it's way too far gone. It's extraordinarily, it's, you know, where we are in the stream of time is like sitting in a lifeboat at one o'clock in the morning, about two blocks away from the Titanic and she's four fifths under and we're waiting to watch the, the big event when she finally goes totally under. So that's where we are. So the you know, on my, I've said it before, the only light at the end of the tunnel is a train coming. We're too far gone now to do anything about any of this. So the only thing I'm suggesting is that you just uh, learn about it. Just understand how your uh, world works, how the, how the laws work, how the government works. So that you can operate with it, you know, within it, uh, and understand for the first time that you are not free. You're not free. Uh, you know, the sole idea of America being the land of the free and home of the brave. That's that's a long time ago. That's a silly co uh, you know, comment from a long time ago. America is not free or brave. It is what it is. We are we are nothing more than uh, than slaves. In a, in a brilliantly conceived system. And I have to give the uh, the masters of this world uh, at least their due, is that it is a brilliant system. It has allowed uh, most people in the world, especially in the Western world, to live higher than the pharaohs of Egypt and, uh, and, the, and, the, you know, and the kings of uh, Europe. Uh, you know, we drive flashy new cars and eat steak dinners and watch television and fly around the world on vacation. So it's a brilliantly and uh, designed system. So I don't fight it anymore. I just try and educate people as to just so that you know uh, what you're doing. You at least understand. And I, I talked about, I think, maybe even on this show where we get the word understand. It means quite literally to go downstairs and uh, if you're gonna put a lot of weight on a second story, uh, you go downstairs and look at the ceiling, uh, move, remove the ceiling tiles and look at the foundation of the floor above you that you're going to you know, put a lot of weight on and build on. And so what you're doing is you're standing under the foundation you're gonna build on to get understanding. 
So unless and until you understand how the world is set up and how it actually works, but it's so brilliantly put together that people, generally speaking, are used to the routine. We are used to doing what we do. We pay our taxes. We go to work. We, we do all the things that we normally do from one day to the next as life has it uh, and never really understand what we're doing. And why we do it? We just assume, like a you know, like a normal child, when when a baby is born, it has uh, its own protocol that it learns as it's growing up. Uh, you know, things you do, things you don't do, and your parents are in charge, and you eat a certain time. And so, after a while, as you're growing up, one, two, three, four, five, and six year old. You get to where you know what life is all about, and you do what you do, and when all the kids do the same thing, and so that's how we are. We are, you know, our nation, America. In my opinion, I've just been looking at it for fifty-five years. You know, I don't know. It's just my opinion, but I look at America like it's a kindergarten being run by hell's angels, because most people have no idea in the world who's in charge and how anything works and what the words mean. They have no concept of where things have come from and how things have developed. And they don't know the difference between the king is law or the law is king. So they don't really understand how this country was founded and what the words mean, why we have the institutions that we do. It's just a big morass of, of misunderstanding and yet people, you know, and you have to show you the brilliance of the system. It continues to work. People are going to work every day and in, in eating and building and living their lives. And no one seems to have figured out what's really actually going on. And that's the brilliance of the system. Because uh, there are people in this country who are very bright and extraordinarily well-read. And they know that we... Americans, like most people in the world, are nothing more than slave labor. We are not free. We haven't been free since, uh, I would say, about 1830s. is about the last time we tasted any freedom. And by 1848, we were finished. The United States of America was totally finished by 1848. And as we began to go downhill <clears throat> and leave the original uh constitution the original declaration of independence and by 1860s we were involved in a civil war which meant that the there is no longer any united states period you can't be united when one half is killing the other half so there's nothing united about the states used to be but not anymore and so after 18 after the Civil War in 18, about right around 1870, 71, it became apparent that uh, the United States are no longer united. We're, we're, you know, we've been destroyed. We don't even know what we're doing. We don't even know who we are anymore. All we're trying to do is stay alive. So some very bright people who had the money and the connections in Europe they decided to make this place we call the states, the the 48, uh, to make this into a company, a corporation. And so they inaugurated something called the United States Corporation. And uh, and you know the history of it is is overwhelming now. I started talking about this many years ago and giving lectures on it. And now today, if you go on the and I wasn't the only one. There are many bright people out there many years ago talking about this. But today, it's all over the world now. Now, it's it's everywhere. Just go on the web and and uh, to YouTube and, and type in, very simple, the U.S. is a corporation. The U.S. is a corporation. And look at and watch all the quite literally hundreds of brilliant lectures on this subject to, you know, this way I don't have to explain anything to you. Go watch it for hours and days on brilliant people who have done their homework and research and find out how America really works, what we really are. We're not a democracy. We, we you know, democracy we know is the worst form of government you could possibly have. 
And so what we what we started out to be was a was a republic like the Roman Empire originally. It was a republic. Republic means it's it's uh, guided by immutable laws. It's guided by laws that are chiseled in stone, and they have a constitution. And we you know all people were sub- subject to the law, and the laws were written out. Well, today. Uh, there is no law. There is only what the corporation says it is today. And so the way it worked is after 1871, uh, there was a corporation, as I said, incorporated in Delaware. It's just a company. It's like any other corporation, General Motors, General Electric, Ford Motor Company. It's just a company. Well, and uh, this was a municipal corporation. And they called it the United States Corporation. But there is a world of difference to any attorney and, and, and uh, I would say constitutional attorneys know that there is a world of difference between being uh, the United States or the United States of America. Totally different. And so uh, the United States Corporation is just that. It's a company. It's a corporation. And all and all corporations, according to corporate law, all corporations must have a president. Obviously, so we've got a president of the corporation. All corporations must have a vice president. That's corporate law. So we've got a vice president. All corporations must, by law, have a secretary treasurer. So we've got a secretary treasurer. I mean, the very founding of the 13 colonies was a business. They used they were they were they were not called colonies; they were called companies originally, because the whole idea, uh, you know, came out of India. The British India East uh, East India Trading Company is connected with the founding of the of America and the United States, and then from there it, it morphed into after the Civil War a different kind of corporation. And today, it's just a business. That's all, like the mafia tells you. We, we like it, nothing personal, but it's a business. And uh, and so when you understand how the business works and how the corporation works, um, the corporation is not empowered today. The United States is not empowered with laws. Uh, you know, laws come from a higher higher source. But corporations do have their own policy. <clears throat> I mean, if you're working for Ford Motor Company, Ford does whatever Ford wants and doesn't want with its employees is not God's law written in the heavens. No, it's just Ford. It's Ford's law. It's the Ford's, uh, um, what you might call their policy. His policy is you start work at seven and you'll go home at three and you do this and you do that and you take off a lunch. Those are not God's laws, the immutable laws of the universe. No, they're just a policy. Sears has a policy and Ford has a policy and General Motors has a policy. Everybody that's a corporation has their own policy. So therefore we have politicians who make the policy backed up by police. Police comes in the same word as policy, and uh, the policy makers, we talk about the lawmakers, no, the policy makers. So, you know, when you begin to see how this whole entire United States today works, what it really is, then you begin to look at the courts and commerce and the banking and the insurance companies and education and, my God, then you begin to wake up and realize what this really is all about and what's really going on in the world because all governments around the world are corporations. And so you have corporate takeovers. You have one big corporation comes in and sees a a, a corporation that used to be big but is losing money, and that corporation makes a deal where we'll buy you out and uh, pay your stockholders off and we'll buy you out. Well, if that corporation doesn't want to get bought out, well, we didn't ask if you wanted to get bought out. We're buying you out whether you like it or not because you owe and you, you know, you're, you're, you're not making any money. You're going in the hole. We've got billions, so we're going to buy you out like the mafia. We didn't ask you. And so if you put up a fight, well, then we, I have to kill you because we're going to take it over. 
So that's what's going on today around the world as corporations are at each other's throat, big corporations and small ones. And it's just a business. The whole world is a business. Like uh, like they said in the movie uh, 25, 30 years ago, Network. You know, the whole world is just a business, Mr. Beal. It's money, it's cor- corruption, graft. And like Michael Carleone said in Godfather 3, at the very end of the movie, uh, Godfather 3, at the end of the movie, Michael says to his sister, you know, when I was growing up, sister, he said, I I used to think that the higher you go in the world, the higher up you go, the more correct and honest and lawful everything has to be. Now I find, he says, as a Godfather, now I find it's just the opposite. The higher you go, the more l- dirty, filthy, pornographic, murderous, violent business really is at the top. And so uh, and I thought, yeah, I know that. I've, I've known that for years. So, you know, basically what happened in 1871 is they made every every man, woman, and child in America into a corporation. And I'm talking about something right now that I don't really know that well because that's not my subject. I'm I'm far more interested in ancient theology and how it impacts our civilization today, uh, religion generally speaking. But I'm not stupid. I understand how the world has developed, where it's come from, thousands of years ago, the concepts and ideas of political systems and how they morphed and and uh, and eventually became, uh, you know, something totally different, and how the evolution of the etymology of words and terms and symbols that we use today, where they've come from, all the secret uh, secrets of secrets that the world operates on. So the bottom line is that about 1871, the uh, every man, woman, and child was considered to be a company, a corporate a corporation, and uh, my God, we could talk about this for hours. I don't even know where to really start, but doing the best I can off the top of my head. So the, uh, every man, woman, and child is a corporation. And to, uh, to, ex- uh, and to um, give you an example, if I see you out with some girl one night, and I tell you the next day, look at that girl you were with last night, she's very, she's bad company. And you say to me, mind your own business. And then I find out you're going to get married and she's going to be your partner. Partner, business, uh, you know, my uh, company. We're talking business here. That's why when you get married, you have to have a, a license to get married. It's a business. One corporation is going to do business with another corporation. And you can do that. That's just called business. But, of course, it's none of my business. That's your business. And uh, so any corporation I'm dealing with, uh, that's my business, not yours. And so uh, that's where we get our terms and words from because each one of us is a corporation. And uh, And there's two of you, incidentally. There's a corporate you and the, and the real you. The real you is a personal man with a flesh and blood man. But you will find that there is no law on the book anywhere in this world that refers to you and includes you as a man, as, as a living man, a woman, a child. There is no law, especially in America. No law applies to anyone on this in this country, period. It only the the actual words of the laws in the law books will tell you only corporations are subservient to the law. The law only applies to corporations, period. End of sentence. Therefore, obviously there must be two of you. There must be the real you, the flesh and blood you, which is private. And then there is the legal or lawful you that can be brought to court. You're doing business. Now we're talking money and business. Uh, It's the business of life. So uh, to give you an example, uh, if you, you know, what I do with you 
uh, privately. If we go somewhere, we're talking, I'm buying dinner, you're buying this and that. This is all private between you and I. Nobody nobody knows us. No, nobody else's business. But if you and I are going to join into some corporate business where we're going to open up some kind of a business, or, uh, you know, it's going to be a large business between you and I, now we're talking legality. Now we're talking, uh, you know, that it's a corporate business now. It's not private. Now it's public. And so now uh, I cannot come over to your home if you owe me $500. I cannot come to your home and steal $500 from you or do anything to you. No, that's private. Person to person, man to man, I can't do that. That's against the law. But I can sue you in court. That's the public you, the business you. So there's two of you. There's the public you, which anybody can can sue, and any and, and you'll have to get licenses from the government to do business with people. If you're going to get married, you got to have a license. Why? Because you're getting ready to do business. It may be monkey business. It may be a very bad business, but you're getting ready to do business. And if the business doesn't work out, you're not going to go to God. You're going to court. You better bring your house and your car and your money and everything you own because it's just business. So the way it works is very simple. And a classic example, too, about how commerce works that people have no idea in the world. And I'll get back to this uh, this whole thing about birth certificate in a minute. But uh, suppose, just to give you an example, the way your commercial system in America works, commerce. Suppose you were a painting a painting contractor. Did I tell you this the last time we talked? Uh, to my knowledge, I no, not not this specific. Okay. Thing. Okay, I don't. Want, I know people are always saying Jordan Maxwell repeats himself. Well, I know, but. You remember what Jordan Maxwell said because he said it five times. But anyway, uh, suppose you were a painting contractor and I hire you to paint my office, and you give me a price of say a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars to paint the office. Okay, the way it works in commerce in America, the business. This is not personal. This is business. Is uh, you give me a, uh, you do the job, then you come to me and you give me a bill. And you write it up on paper. It's written up on paper and dated. A bill. And the bill is for $100. Okay? I reach into my pocket and I pull out a $100 bill and I give it to you. And you are happy because I paid you. There it is. You want 100 I'll give you 100 I didn't give you anything. I gave you a $100 bill because you gave me a bill. For $100, I gave you a $100 bill. If you had given me a bill for $20, I'd give you a $20 bill. Get it? It's a bill. You owe me. So the dollar, $100 piece of paper I have in my wallet is a bill. It's a bank note, and you owe me $100. That's the way it works. And so, therefore, I have not paid the bill because any attorney will tell you you cannot in America pay a bill. We say things like that. I got to pay this bill. That no, no. In actual court language, you cannot pay a bill. You can discharge a debt, but you cannot pay a bill. So when you give me a bill for 100 I'll give you a $100 bill. Now you owe me 100 The idea is now like a bank account. We're talking about bank account. So we have now a, an account between you and I. I owe you 100 and you owe me 100 So we're even. And now you go back out and take that $100 bill and you pay somebody else. And so the bottom line is, at the end of the day, no one has paid anyone for nothing. Nobody's paid anybody. Everybody has neutralized their debt. And so at the bottom line is, is that you cannot do anything with your house or your car or anything you want to do because you do not own your car. You do not own your your house, your home. You don't own your apartment or your condo. You don't actually, in point of fact, in a, in a court of law, you do not own nothing. 
because you never paid for anything. You neutralize the debt by giving the debt to someone else, but you actually never actually put out uh, gold and silver coins to the amount that you owe on your car and bought it with gold or silver or, or any way you know that is acceptable internationally, worldwide, as paying something, paying for something. So since you never paid for your car, you only neutralized the debt with paper, then you don't actually, in fact, own the car. That's why every, every year you have to pay the lease on the car. Anytime you buy a car, it's owned by the bank, and ultimately it's owned by the government. And so <clears throat> you get a pink slip. And the ping slip shows that you don't own it. You're merely the person that's using it, and you are neutralizing the debt by your by your money each each month that you pay. It's an extraordinary subject of how banking works, and where do we find banks? We find banks on each each side of a river. It's called river bank. And what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current sea. Because your your money is referred to in law as a currency, and so you know because it's a current, it's an ebb and flow. It comes in, it goes out. Comes in, it goes out. So it's a current. And so once you understand that uh, your money is like water, actually, in point of fact, it's called maritime admiralty. Maritime meaning of the sea. So your money is maritime admiralty <clears throat> finance. It's it's water. So we say, you know, money goes through your hands like water. No. And point of fact, before the judge, money is water. Period. Your your money is referred to as liquid asset, cash flow. And when you begin to, you know, nail all of this down, how the world works and what your money really is, and what your bank statement really is, and what your government actually is, none of this makes sense uh, to anyone. That's why the whole country is in trouble financially and <clears throat> educationally and in, in, in trouble with the law because they don't know how the world actually works. And so when you when you begin to see that there's a whole world of dark knowledge secrets, uh, secret words and terms, and you're going to a court, and why do you go to a court? You you play tennis on a court, play basketball on a court. How do you play tennis on a court? You play with a racket. Get it? And so when you're in a court, the whole idea in a court is to put the ball back in the other guy's court. And so anytime you've got a tennis match or a basketball match, you've got to have a, uh, a referee. You're going to have somebody make sure everybody's playing by the rules. So in a court, you're playing, uh, you know, putting the ball back in the other guy's court. Why? Because you've got one team on the one side that's a team of lawyers, and they are opposing your, the other guy who has his team. So you've got two teams bouncing the ball back and forth, back and forth, and the judge is wearing a black robe because he is now the uh, – he's the he's – the, uh, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, and he was like, uh, he's, he's calling the shots. He's making sure everybody plays by the, by the same rules. So that's all he's doing. He's not, he's, you know, he doesn't care. He's going to get paid anyway. It doesn't matter. But he's like the referee is the word I was looking for. He's like a referee. He's just sitting there watching both sides argue back and forth and make sure they're all doing it correctly according to the corporate rules and regulations. And so, therefore, you're going to be charged. Well, that's what you do when you walk in and plug something into the wall. Uh, you know, you, you're plugging into the circuit. So, therefore, you've got a circuit judge in a circuit court, and you're going to plug in. And But why? Because you've been charged. And, uh, you know, you're sticking your finger in the light plug, and you're going to get charged. And uh, And all law, I mean, all crime, and this is something most people have never heard, all crime including a deliberate first-degree murder. All crime is in commerce, according to, and ask any good 
a federal lawyer or any judge, look it up in a book, you will find all crime, period, no matter how, from the smallest to the greatest, is considered commerce. It's business, period. It's bad business. It's treacherous business. It's sneaky business. It's, in, uh, it's, it's dishonest business. But all crime, no matter what you do, is by law a commercial venture. And therefore, you have to pay uh, for your crime. Pay? Yeah, you have to pay. Uh, and so you got to pay your debt to society. Why? Because your batter, your body, your physical body is a battery, and uh, and you you know your your body is a battery. It's, it's that's what causes you to live. Your heart's beating because of an electrical impulse. Your muscles move because of an electrical impulse. Your whole body is alive because of electricity. It's called bioelectrical. Well, since your body is a bioelectrical a bioelectrical unit, and you're like eighty to ninety percent water. Therefore, you are a battery, and therefore, if you can, when you go to court, uh, you know they're going to put you in a cell. That's what they do. They call it a battery. They put you in a cell, and so uh, when you walk into a court, uh, they're going to, you know, you're going to be operating under a system that you don't understand. It's, it's called maritime admiralty law. And that's why when you walk into a courtroom. You will see a uh, you will see a, a a fence and a little gate, and so the people who want to see what's going on are waiting to to you know waiting for the court. They sit outside. They sit in the seats, and then inside the gate is the judge and and the officials that work with the judge. But there's a gate there. There's a fence and a gate, and so why? Well, because there's a, always been a fence and a gate between the waters of the oceans and the land. Water can only go so far and uh, and it stops. And that's the way it is. That's the way life is. Water will only come so far. Uh, you know, you go down to the beach and watch it. It only comes in so far and stops. And so where it stops, it's called a sandbar. And the water stops and it builds up a sandbar and, it, and its undertow builds up what is called a sandbar. And so there's uh, there's a wooden gate, and at the top of the gate is a is a piece of wood going across the top of the gate, and that's and so therefore that's the sand bar. It's a bar. It's barring you from going into the water because once you pass that bar, and incidentally you're not licensed to pass the bar, but once you uh, are called and you get up and you put your hand on that bar on that gate, you open up the gate. That's called a flood gate. You are now opening your floodgates so that you can now enter into maritime admiralty law. Now we call, we say you're in hot water. And somebody bail you needs to bail you out. And so uh, so now you are going to be charged. Uh, and, and you're going to be put in a cell if you can't pay for the debt, pay the debt. And so the whole idea of uh, of our political, economic, and cultural system is based on hidden symbols and emblems and words and terms, and especially concepts that we've never been told about. And Jordan, and Jordan, so, Jordan, I'm, I'd like you to, to get to the birth certificate thing. And just, you know, 20 minutes left on the live feed. Um, before, after this whole court thing, there's a couple of things I want to talk about regarding um, – uh, like antiquity and like Noah's um, Ark and all that in the Ice Age, just so you know. Yeah, so yeah, and I appreciate that because I, I could go on talking about this stuff for hours. Yeah, I know. It's cool. So anyway, what else can we talk about? Yeah, well, well tell, tell, the, tell everybody about how the birth certificate thing works, and then I'd like to uh, get to that other stuff. You didn't okay, mention that yet. quickly. Quickly, uh, all business is based on water because all money is water. So all business is based on water, period. And therefore, uh, when a ship uh, from Japan, say, comes to uh, Los Angeles bringing $8 million worth of Toyotas or TVs or whatever, that ship comes in on water. And therefore, when the uh, uh, ship docks, it docks at the uh, – it, it's, it's parked 
it's where the ship parks is called its berth, B-E-R-T-H, it's berth. So it's called birthing a ship. And all captains call their ship she. You know, she's a good ship. She's very seaworthy. She's this and she's that. All captains, airline pal- captains, any kind of a captain always calls his vehicle a she. That's the law. So all ships are she. And when she comes in, she parks at her berth. And each item on that ship coming off is represents money coming off the ocean, coming off the water. All uh, all those are, are, you know, cars and TVs or whatever. Each one has to have its own certificate of manifest, its own paperwork. Does it have two doors or four doors? What color is it? Uh, how big a screen is it? So each one of the articles coming off that ship represents business, money coming in off of water. So therefore, she is uh, in her birth, and each item she she brings to the world is uh, has to have its own certificate. So it's called a birth certificate. And so when you were born, you have a birth certificate because your mother, you know, your father uh, was the man, M-A-N, the man manufacturer. And your mother was in labor, building the new item, the new, the new, uh, uh, um, the new item, which is you. And so, therefore, you are coming in on your mother's water. She, and when her water broke, you came out into life. So, therefore, your mother was in labor, building you off of water. And your father, being your father, was the man manufacturer. And and so therefore you have to have a birth certificate, and uh, and and it has to be signed by the dock. The dock has to sign your birth certificate. That's right, because the the ship is sitting at the dock. <clears throat> so when you, again, it's all part of a commercial, occult, mystical, dark system of words and terms and symbols that uh, I just have always felt to be very interesting. And yeah, I and, thought it's, uh, and, you know. Jordan, I want to ask, it's do you something subscribe? that we all need to know. Do you subscribe to the idea that a birth certificate is actually a death certificate because um, capital letters, like they put capital letters on gravestones, um, so therefore, it's a, and also because corporation is related to the word corpse, which symbolizes death, so is the birth certificate a, actually a death certificate? Well, it, yeah, it, it, that's true, but, but to see, as I told you, there's two of you, as a private you and a corporate you. The corporate you is always denoted in law as in co- uh, capital letters. You will never get a bill from, from, the, from Sears or from the gas company or from an insurance company or anything. You will never get a bill for anything in your life that your name is not in all capital letters. You will never get a bill from anybody. If you get a bill from anything for a gas company or, or insurance <clears throat> lawsuit, it must be in all capital letters. Period. That's the law. And therefore, uh, that uh, all capital letters represents a corporation. That's why when you die, you're a corpse. Why? Because when you go by a graveyard, you'll see all the names of the corporations that are now defunct. They're not business anymore. They're out of business but they're in all capital letters because they were a corporation. Now they are a corpse. So it's, it's all part and, you know, this is the kind of thing we could go and talk for five hours. And, but I'm just bringing to your attention that everything is based on water. And therefore the only thing on water that works is a ship. So therefore you have a citizenship a relationship, a dealership, scholarship, everything is ship, ship. So just wake up and understand that the whole world you operate under in America and around the world has nothing to do with anything you think it does. It's a whole hidden system. There is no question about that. Um, I'd like to talk about, uh, let's try to kill two birds with one stone here. I remember listening to your um, Richie Allen interviews, and you actually talked about how um, the story of Noah is based on a previous story, um, the Epic of Gilgamesh story. You said there was no Noah and there was there was no great flood. Well, I dis- must say I disagree with that there was no <laughs> flood thing because countless cultures from the past do talk about some sort of a flood. And also, um, I'm currently reading Michael Tsarian's book, Atlantis, Alien Visitation and Genetic Manipulation. Yeah. You actually have a quote on one of the outside cover of the books basically praising the book. And one of the th- interesting things that Michael Tsarian says in that book is that um, 13,000 years ago, about that time, um, 
they said that we had the end of an ice age and there was a horrible global catastrophe, but Sarian asserts, no, there was actually no ice age. That's one of history's biggest lies. It was just like some sort of a pole shift or something. So the idea that there either was or was not a flood, agree or disagree, and why do you agree or disagree with that, and also the idea of whether there was an ice age, like Sarian claims there wasn't. What do you have to say about all okay. that? Okay, all, all over the world, there's overwhelming, in-your-face, obvious uh, uh, proof that virtually nobody uh, uh, refutes that there were great, huge floods, and I do mean enormous floods. <clears throat> but there was no worldwide covering of the earth, as the Bible says, uh, over you know, over a mile higher than the highest mountain top. And so that Noah had to send out a bird to see if there was any land showing anywhere. Well, that is ludicrous on the face of it, scientifically speaking. There's never been a flood that covered the highest mountain on the earth. <clears throat> it's ludicrous. But there has obviously been enormous floods that swept over whole continents. So there's no, there's no problem with understanding great floods. I said, what I actually said is that there's never been ever a flood which covered the earth so that the highest mountain on the earth was underwater. That's ludicrous on the face of it and doesn't even need to be discussed. It's unscientific and it's stupid. But that there has been massive floods, I don't have any problem with that. It's all over the world. I mean, even the, uh, even the Sphinx in Egypt has, has water eroded. We find seashells. I don't know if you know this, but there's seashells on the Great Pyramid in Egypt. So if you have salt and seashells uh, at the top of the pyramids in Egypt, something must have happened where the seashells got onto the pyramid. Uh, obviously, there have been monstrous floods, but there's no flood that covered the whole earth and covered the highest mountain, uh, you know, so that you'd have to send out a bird to even find out if there's any land. That's ludicrous. That's what I said. That make okay, any that, sense? That, yeah, that, that, that's fair enough. Um, I'm glad you got to clarify that. Um, getting back to one thing about um, law again, um, I remember in a uh, talk you did, like there's this four-hour video on YouTube I saw where you and some guy named Victor with a last name I couldn't possibly pronounce. Um, <laughs> yeah, Victor talking, Marjabedian, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. And at the end of that talk, you talked about becoming a sovereign. Now, the, the yeah. whole thing about becoming a, a sovereign, a lot of people will say, well, the, all the things you got to do for that, like uh, get rid of Social Security and um, like get, abolish your birth <laughs> certificate, all that stuff. A lot of people that have tried to do that, once they become a so quote unquote sovereign, they find that they can't do anything in the real world because That's everything. That's exactly right. Yeah. So it, do That's you exactly uh, think right. it's a. Okay, so the process that you suggested that people follow to become a sovereign, if you agree with that, then by all means tell us what you think they should do or have you maybe retracted your uh, take on people possibly doing something like that? Yes, well, see, I realized that when I first heard it, I knew in my gut that we all are sovereigns. When you were born and came out of your mother, nobody owned you. The universe didn't own you. God owns you, so you know, you're free. Uh, now, of course, you're going to be brought into your government you know, all the, and all the man-made stuff that's, that's been here over everybody from, you know, for thousands of years, and you're going to be susceptible to it. But in point of fact, actually speaking, you are a sovereign because your mother gave birth to you. The government didn't build you. The government didn't give you life. The government doesn't, uh, you know, is not your creator. God is your creator, so to speak. And so, therefore, I understood the idea of sovereignty, but uh, there are different ways of going about it. And all the ways that, that normal people go about getting into sovereignty, they end up in prison. They end up broke and in prison or in jail. There is one way you can become totally disassociated with the federal government, if you wish, and it's perfectly lawful and legal, if you want to drop out of the corporation called the United States Corporation, the United, you know, and Washington, D.C., you can become a state, so, uh, state citizen. A state citizen uh, goes back to, eight, to 1776 and to the founding of America, where everyone uh, in this country were members of their own state. There was no federal 
uh, citizenship. There was only state. So people asking you, you say, I'm, I'm a Texan. I'm from Texas. I'm from Colorado. And therefore, you were under the law of Colorado. You're under the law of California. You were a state citizen. But in 1871, uh, you know, the states have been killing each other. So there was one corporation now, and it's a privately owned company, and it's called the United States Corporation. So now, no longer were you a member of a state. You are now a, an employee of a foreign corporation called United States Corporation. So you can still today be a state citizen. Go on the web and read and type in statecitizenship.org. State citizen or statecitizenship.org. And it will tell you all about how to become a state citizen, which removes you from the federal jurisdiction forever, period. And no longer does the federal government have anything whatsoever to do with you, period. No laws affect you. No laws apply to you, period. But there's, you know, like uh, the devil is in the details. When you do that, you have just committed suicide because you are now totally free of the federal system and the federal government has no jurisdiction over you. And that means, as translated to mean, no more driver's license, no more uh, car registration, no more of this, no more of that. You can't get insurance. Nobody, and I do mean and emphasize nobody is going to hire you and nobody is going to do any business with you because you are a freak. You are a mentally deranged freak. You don't have to pay taxes. You don't have to uh, pay fines and tickets. You don't have to do anything in the federal system because you're out of it and you're perfectly lawful and legal and the government agrees with it, but nobody out there in, in, uh, in the country is going to hire you. Nobody's going to understand what you're doing. So you might as well, if, you better, if you're not Donald Trump with hundreds of millions of dollars in actual cash in your hand, then you better stay a federal citizen because there's going to be no insurance. There'll be no driver's license, no registration. And what happens to you if you go out uh, to drive in your car as a state citizen? You're going to get stopped. As soon as you go out, because you have no license and no driver's license and no insurance, and you're going to be put in jail. And then after jail, six weeks or two months later, you'll finally get into court and you will show the judge that you are, in point of fact, lawfully a state citizen. And the court will say, yes, we agree with you. Sorry that you were arrested. and You can go. You, you're free to go because you are a state citizen. And then when you go out to your car to drive home, you will get stopped because you have no license and they will arrest you. And from here on out for the rest of your life, you're going to spend it in court telling judges and showing judges that you're a state citizen. So my idea, my thinking is you're, you're lost because you cannot operate in America. You can't have a job in America. You can't have a bank account. You can have no credit card. You can do no business with anybody because you're not in the corporation. Period. You're not in the corporation. The company called United States does not acknowledge you. You are a state citizen. So I hope you got a lot of money and stay home because if you go out, you're going to get arrested because the people out there, the cops out there on the street, they don't know beans to bullshit about any state citizen. All they know is that they are told if there's no license on that car, arrest him. Period. They don't care about oh, state citizenship. They can't even read most of them, so they don't care about state yeah, I, citizenship. I know, I know, you know what you're talking about. I, I got pulled over in Arizona not that long ago, and I tried to say I'm not operating in a commercial capacity. The officer didn't know what, he was, what I was talking about, so I spent 30 hours in jail, and I'm currently trying to work that whole thing out, but that's another story. Okay, so um, there it is. I, I see <laughs> that's how, my point. Okay, but anyway, uh, we got a caller in the queue, area code 601. You are on the air. What's your name? Where you're from? What's your question? Five minutes till the live feed is up, just so you know. Oh, <laughs> he just dropped off. I guess he uh, didn't want to. Uh, scared him. We scared him. Okay, I didn't mean to do that. But but anyway, um, we got time for one more subject. Um, I have to ask you to do this really quickly on the fly here. Because um, you only got four minutes, forty-five seconds to the life. Feed. Well, you can go past a little past an hour if you want to. But I've heard you say the um, mafia controls the government, and the Vatican controls the mafia. Could you quickly give the uh, smoking gun uh, proof that that statement is true? <laughs> 
Well, I'm talking about corporations. The United States Corporation is a Vatican corporation. It's based on British East India Corporation. It's based on something that happened back in the 9th century, 10th century. The Vatican became a corporation, a company, uh, even Islam today. Islam is a corporation. It's a company. It has owners. Uh, people don't know anything about this, never heard of it. We don't have a whole lot of time. But uh, the, country, this, this, the United States is a company. It's a corporation. The Vatican is a corporation. Uh, Israel is a company, a corporation on the stock market. Islam uh, is, a, is a corporation, a company on the stock market. And so it's all corporations. And so we want everybody to cooperate because it's all cooperations. So, uh, yeah, but that's a big story. But what the last couple of minutes, I would like to say <clears throat> that if people are interested to uh, learn more from me and my work, go on my website, Jordan Maxwell Show, S H O W dot com. That's Jordan Maxwell Show dot com because there's another website out there called Jordan Maxwell dot com, which does not belong to me. It was taken from me five years ago, and it doesn't belong to me. So people are sending money to donate and buy videos and books and stuff off of jordanmaxwell.com. And it, for five years, it's never come to me. So it does not belong to me. Stay away from jordanmaxwell.com. If you want to talk to me or see my work, go to jordanmaxwellshow.com. That's where I am. Again, I want to thank you for letting me be on your show. You're very welcome. And just because we got um, two minutes left, uh, one more thing I just want to bring up. Um, you said back in the um, in, in many of your talks actually that uh, why is the number thirteen unlucky? And you said it has something to do with um, Jesus being the thirteenth apostle, so to speak. And I was scratching my head. I must admit, after I heard that, because I really don't see how that has anything to do with not being lucky. So could you please um, enlighten me and by that? <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> what I said is that Jesus has 12 apostles. That's why you have 12 jurors in a jury room and in, in a court, because you have 12 jurors, because they're going to help bring the truth to light. And Jesus said, I am the light and the truth, the truth and the light. Well, you're going to bring the truth to light uh, with 12 apostles or 12 jurors. And so Jesus represented the master and he has 12 followers. And so the 12 and 1 make 13. So 13 is a, is a perfect number for government. And in the, in the ancient numerology, 13 is perfect government. Perfect government is Jesus governing the world with his 12 apostles, which is actually the sun, S-U-N, with his 12 signs of the zodiac, or 12 months of the year. So the 12 months of the year plus their master, the sun, makes 13. So 13 is a perfect number for government. <clears throat> and so that's why the United States had to be originally, the, the, the original revolution, American Revolution, had to happen in 1776. Because in Hebrew and Jewish numerology, eight, the number eight is the number of new beginnings. It's the only number that you can write over and over and over without lifting your pen from the paper, an eight. And therefore, you turn an eight sideways, it becomes infinity. So infinity is running back and forth, back and forth, making an eight. So eight is the number of new beginnings. You're always starting over again on that eight. And 76, one in seven, 1776, one in seven is eight, and seven in six is 13. So the great uh, thinkers, the great philosophers who founded America knew we're going to start something new, which is eight, and it's going to be based on Jesus and his 12 apostles called Christian civilization. So it's going to have to be in 1776, we're going to have to have the revolution. It's all well thought out by secret societies that founded America. That's a very big story. And most people think it's crazy because they've never heard it before. So I don't care if you've never heard it before. That's the name of the tune. That's where it came from. 13 is an unlucky number, but the reason why 13 is an unlucky number is a different reason. That has um, uh, the head of the Knights Templars, Jacques de Molay, was put to death in France on Friday the 13th. That's where the unlucky comes from. 13 has always been a very important number, but Jacques de Molay, the, the, head, of the, the head mason of the uh, Knights Templars, 
was put to death in France, in Paris, on, uh, on, on Friday the 13th. That's why Friday the 13th is unlucky. Well, real unlucky for Jacques de Molay, so that's why the, the Masonic Order of Knights Templars even today say 13 is an unlucky number. No, 13 originally was based on Jesus and his 12 founding a great uh, society or a great government we call a Christian, Judeo-Christian civilization. Big, it's a big story, and I know we don't have much more time. No, we don't. Uh, there is one caller in the queue. Would you like to take this caller if you had sure, something to... Sure, sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Caller in the queue, uh, your number is 111-111-1111. What's your name? Where you're from? What's your question? Or were you just listening? I'm about to end the show after this, so going once. Well, the